Hello and welcome. Today we are going to look at chemical properties of chlorine. In the last video we had a look at the physical properties, at least the major ones. And today we want to see how does chlorine react with other substances. And in this case we are going to start with metals. So one thing to note about chlorine is that chlorine is a very active element. As we know it belongs to the halogen group, group 7. And usually these elements tend to be reactive. So because of the reactive nature of chlorine, we are going to see it being able to react with metals, non-metals, some hydrocarbons, some alkali and water. But today we are going to basically base on reaction with some of the major metals. So how does chlorine react with sodium, magnesium, iron and zinc? So, just like the name halogens, it means salt formers. Halogens means salt formers, this group 7 elements, because they can easily form salt when they react with metals. And chlorine will always form corresponding chloride salts with given metals. Let's take a look at our magnesium. How does chlorine react with, with magnesium? So, when we try to lower burning magnesium, magnesium should be burning. That means we shall put our magnesium on our deflagrating spoon and then we shall heat the magnesium until it starts burning. Once it starts burning, we shall lower it into our gas jar containing chlorine gas. But remember when magnesium is burning, it burns with a bright white flame bright and white flame so if it's lowered into our gas jar containing chlorine gas what we shall observe is that the burning magnesium will continue to burn with that with that bright white flame for some time and then we shall see some white fumes kind of like a cloud white fumes of magnesium chloride however at the end we shall also see a white solid being left behind which is magnesium chloride as the solid white solid will be left behind in our gas jar so basically we shall see a salt being formed and when magnesium chloride is a salt because we believe the hydrogen ions in the Hydrochloric acid are being replaced by magnesium. So we can form a white solid of magnesium chloride. The same is true for sodium. If we are to deal with sodium, we shall also lower burning sodium into our gas jar containing chlorine gas. And then we shall form some white fumes, just like with magnesium chloride. These fumes appear like cl a cloud you'll see some kind of like cloudy appearance in the gas jar. So at the end, we also form a white solid, which is sodium chloride or common salt. So the same applies to, to this kind of reaction, whereby we shall form our common salt, which is sodium chloride. So even if I don't write notes about sodium, it behaves in the same way with, with magnesium. So that's all about how magnesium react with chlorine. Let's now go and have a look at how chlorine will react with iron. So we all know that iron is the metal responsible for the formation of rust. However, what happens when we try to ensure that iron or iron can react with our chlorine gas? So one thing to note is that we shall have to heat we shall have a setup of this sort. We have a combustion tube where we shall do our heating from. In this combustion tube, we shall place our iron wire in the combustion tube, which is heat resistant, and we shall supply some heat. So we have to ensure that our iron is heated first for it to react with chlorine. And probably we shall prefer dry chlorine gas coming into. So we shall heat our iron until it is red hot. 
red hot must appear red in color so then you shall pass our dry chlorine over heated iron so one thing we shall note is that we shall see some black solids forming at certain parts of our combustion tube some black solid particles remember iron 3 chloride is black iron 3 chloride is black so that will mean that our dry chlorine is reacting with our red hot iron to form this black iron 3 chloride so in some cases we can do some slight warming at this point where we see these black solid particles and at that point we shall see them turning into gas directly and what does that mean it means that our iron 3 chloride undergoes sublimation and then it can be collected in these cooler parts of the conco flask so we shall see our iron 3 chloride condensing back from vapor or from gaseous form back to the solid form so this reaction is normally exothermic once the reaction between chlorine and our iron starts usually even if we put out the heat source the reaction tends to continue even the glowing will continue for quite some time because the reaction is exothermic meaning it gives out heat so this heat can drive the reaction further so in this case we are forming iron 3 chloride remember iron can have both iron 2 and can also have iron 3 but in this case iron 3 is the compound that is formed because chlorine can highly oxidize the iron chlorine is a strong oxidizing agent so because chlorine is a strong oxidizing agent it tends to oxidize the iron to its largest oxidation state which is iron 3 oxide that's why we are forming iron 3 chloride so that's all on how our iron will react with chlorine the conditions at least maybe dry chlorine gas some red hot iron and we are good to go the excess gas can obviously be at least sent off to a safe environment because we know chlorine is poisonous so i'll leave you with one question at least we have seen how chlorine reacts with sodium magnesium iron and i'm going to leave you with the fourth one at least if we are observant i had four metals to look at we shall also look at zinc you can do some research on how it reacts with zinc but no serious difference will be seen so how do you think does our chlorine react with copper can chlorine react with copper if yes what are the conditions do we need to heat do we need dry chlorine or oh, actually we shall see no reaction at all let me know in the comment section below thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe stay safe